Hey everyone, this lesson is on the glucose alanine cycle. And today we're going to talk about how the skeletal muscle and the liver utilize the glucose alanine cycle to process and recycle nitrogenous waste from the skeletal muscle. So to begin, the glucose alanine cycle is also known as the Cahill cycle. When muscles utilize branched-chain amino acids, when they metabolize these branched-chain amino acids, it leads to the production of ammonium or nitrogenous waste. And alanine actually acts as a storage reservoir of this muscle nitrogen. So what the, ca the Cahill cycle or the glucose alanine cycle does is it enables the recycling of nitrogenous waste from the muscle to the liver in the form of alanine. And when the alanine reaches the liver, the liver can then dispose of the nitrogenous waste. It can dispose of the ammonium through the urea cycle. So again, this process actually leads to the transfer of ammonium or nitrogenous waste from the muscle to the liver, where the liver can dispose of the waste through the urea cycle. So how do all of these processes occur in the skeletal muscle and liver? So in the skeletal muscle, when branching amino acids are catabolized, the first enzyme in the branching amino acid catabolism pathway is BCAT or branching amino transferase. In this process, the amino group on a branching amino acid is actually transferred from the branching amino acid to an alpha ketoglutarate forming a glutamate. Other processes in the muscle including purine and pyrimidine breakdown can lead to ammonium production and the ammonium can actually be incorporated onto an alpha ketoglutarate as well with the enzyme glutamate dehydrogenase of also forming glutamate. So as these processes continue, we get a buildup of glutamate in the skeletal muscle. The glutamate can then donate its amino group to a pyruvate to form alanine with the enzyme alanine aminotransferase or AST. And this AST enzyme requires pyridoxal phosphate, which is a vitamin B6 derivative. So again, what happens is alanine aminotransferase will actually take an amino group from the glutamate, add it to the pyruvate to form alanine. And in the process, the glutamate is actually recycled back into alpha-ketoglutarate. So where does the pyruvate actually come from in the skeletal muscle? Well, it comes from the breakdown of glucose through the glycolysis pathway. And the glucose itself can come from glycogen through glycogenolysis or GLUT4 uptake. So once alanine is produced in the skeletal muscle, it can be transferred into the liver and picked up by a liver hepatocyte. The liver hepatocyte will bring in the alanine once the alanine is in the liver hepatocyte, it can undergo a reaction with alanine aminotransferase again, but this time it produces pyruvate. And in this case, the alanine donates its amino group to alpha-ketoglutarate, and alpha-ketoglutarate actually becomes glutamate. Now, the carbon skeleton of pyruvate can then undergo the process of gluconeogenesis to form glucose. And gluconeogenesis only occurs in the liver because it has the enzyme glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, whereas the skeletal muscle does not have this enzyme. And that's why the skeletal muscle does not participate in gluconeogenesis. Now, the glucose, once it's been produced in the hepatocyte, it is transported out into the blood, and, an, and a skeletal muscle can actually pick up the glucose through a GLUT4 transporter. So now that we've seen how the carbon skeleton of alanine is recycled, how does the ammonium or the nitrogenous waste get recycled. So we've seen that the metabolism of alanine in the liver can lead to the production of glutamate. The glutamate can then be processed by glutamate dehydrogenase to release an ammonium. And the ammonium can then be rerouted into the urea cycle and then the production of urea allows excretion of the ammonium or nitrogenous waste. Now the, again, the urea cycle only occurs in the liver and not in the skeletal muscle. And that's because the liver has the enzyme arginase, which is required for the urea cycle. Now there's another way the skeletal muscle can transport its nitrogenous waste to the liver, and that's through glutamine synthesis. Now again, when there's a lot of ammonium produced in the skeletal muscle, that ammonium can be incorporated into glutamate with the enzyme glutamine synthetase producing glutamine. So the glutamine synthetase can actually convert the glutamate into glutamine by adding another amino group. And in the process, it requires an ATP. So this step from glutamate to glutamine requires an ATP. 
Now the glutamine can then be transported in the blood and taken up by a liver hepatocyte. Once the glutamine is in the liver, the glutamine can be metabolized by glutaminase, releasing another ammonium and producing glutamate. The ammonium can then be rerouted into the urea cycle again, and then the glutamate can actually undergo um, an enzymatic reaction with glutamate dehydrogenase again, also releasing another ammonium. So the glutamine can actually act to transport two ammonium or two amino groups to the liver. And then again, all of this leads to the incorporation of ammonium or the nitrogenous waste into the urea cycle. And then the urea can be excreted, allowing the excretion of these nitrogenous wastes. Anyways, guys, that was a lesson on the glucose alanine cycle. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.